Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back. We are so glad you are here. If this is your first time listening, we want to welcome you to the Something Good family. We love sharing stories each week and hearing how truly extraordinary things can happen out of the everyday ordinary. So I want to tell you about something new we're starting. We'd love for you to join us each Friday as we celebrate something good. We want to start the weekend strong by filling everyone's feeds with all the good things. Create a story or a post on your social, sharing something good. It can be anything. Just make sure to tag us so that we can see it and share it too. And you just never know when we will pick one of you to send a little something good to. Make sure to join us for Something Good Fridays. This month, we are taking time to chat all about relationships. We've asked some couples to come share with us about their relationship and what they've learned along the way. Whether you're married, happily single, dating, waiting, or engaged, we think these conversations will encourage you. We can all learn a little something from those who are in maybe a different season than us. If you are in a relationship, you might want to listen to this together. There are some great questions that we raise along the way that would make for some amazing date night conversations. This week, we are talking with our friends, Ron and Debbie Cathcart, who just celebrated 33 years of marriage. We've known the Cathcarts for a long time, and they are the real deal. We've had the privilege of attending the church they started over 20 years ago. They are our friends and ministry partners. Ron is my pastor, co-worker, and he's technically my boss. I think you're going to love this honest and fun conversation. So here we go. Hey friends, welcome back to Now That's Something Good. Today in the studio, I have our good friends, Ron and Debbie Cathcart. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello, hello. (laughs) I'm going to give you guys a chance to introduce yourself in a minute, but I just got to tell you guys listening, like Ron and Debbie, we've been friends with them. How long? I mean, we go to Two Rivers. A long time. A long time. Ron and I actually get the privilege to work together. I'm not going to let him talk about that though, (laughs) because I don't want him telling stories and he doesn't want me telling stories on him. But why don't you guys take a second, introduce yourselves individually. Tell us a little bit about what fills your days right now and a little bit about who you are. You go first. All right. I'm Debbie. And um, right now I spend my days doing whatever God brings to me that <laughs> day. It. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it could be substitute teaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do a lot of that at Francis Hill Middle School mostly. And uh, I always enjoy a day there. And then grandkids yes. fill at least a couple of days. Yep. During my week, and then, like I said, whatever else God brings my way. My mom and dad right now, my I try to make it down. Uh, they live in Arnold, Missouri, and so I try to make it down there Yeah, probably about once a week. And so that almost fills up my week right there. So. That's a lot. That's a lot. And we're going to come yeah. back and talk about all those things more because you already hit on great things. I got questions about <laughs> Ron. Yeah, uh, so um, I'm Ron, and uh, I... Have been married to Debbie for 33 years. We celebrated our 33rd anniversary. That's yep. crazy. So great on, 33 yeah, years, right? Yeah. <laughs> we celebrated that on February the 6th <sighs> and uh, actually getting ready to go away for a week. We, we usually try to get away for a week and celebrate our anniversary yeah. every year. So we're getting ready to go away for a week. We're excited about that to hang out. And um, so... Uh, you know my story. I'm Ron. She's Debbie. We yes. have four boys, Carson, Cameron, Connor, Cooper. And I always say, I'm Ronald Ray. She's Deborah Kay. It's Carson Ray, Cameron Trey, Connor J, Cooper Clay, and we're all Cray Cray. Oh, I slapped the table. I'm sorry. It's okay. And um, so anyway, I talk with my hands. You know that. It's okay. If there's so, extra noises, this is why, guys. It's fine. No. Yeah. No. So we uh, we have four boys. We have two daughter-in-laws. We have three grandkids. Yeah. Uh, two girls and one boy. Boy, and then another little boy grandbaby on the way in April. That's awesome. And so that's our family. That's who we are and very blessed. That's great. And what is your day job, Ron? Yeah. So my <laughs> day job actually is uh, I have the honor of being the pastor at Two Rivers. Got mm-hmm. to start Two Rivers 22 years ago, something like that. And um, been doing that ever since. I always tell people that I couldn't find another job, so I had to start my own church because I couldn't find one to hire me, which is not really true, but uh, what a what a journey that has been. Um, honestly, never thought 
I would be in one place as long as I have been, but yeah. uh, it's been a great blessing. And so I do, Sarah, get to work with you, and that's always uh, a blessing, and we have a great team. and We do. Uh, so yeah, that's what fills my days, is uh, being a part of the team at Two Rivers. I love it. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited that you guys are here to talk and share with us. So we are making February kind of like relationship month, just talking about all the things, and it's really quite... I mean, a miraculous thing that you guys have been married 33 years yeah. <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And like, <laughs> what are you saying? No, Sarah. <laughs> I'm saying I know Ron, Debbie. Yeah, I don't know how that's what she's saying. She's like, how did you, you, know, you be I work funny. with this guy. How have you been married to him for 33 years? That's no, exactly but, what she just said. But in today's world, a lot of marriages, I mean, it's still yeah. over 50% um, end in divorce. And a lot of people don't even get married today. It's just a whole lot of things with that. And so we wanted to take time to really just talk about that. So I want you to bring us way back <laughs> to the beginning days of Ron and Debbie. And Debbie, I'm going to ask you to tell the story first, but how did, how did you and Ron meet? Like, just tell us all these details. Well, I'm greeter woman at church. I love to meet new people. Yeah. And um, I love people. And I was greeter girl at First Baptist Church of Arnold <laughs> back when I was 13. And we had this new person show up to youth group and okay. the youth pastor brought him over and introduced him to me. And so that was um, our first meeting. Okay. Well, uh, Debbie, I got to ask you a question because I've heard, it's a little unfair friends that I know a little bit of Ron and Debbie's story. I've heard some of this. And so I often get to hear Ron tell this story because Ron speaks from our stage most Sundays. And so he tells some of these stories, but Debbie, I really feel like we need to hear from you. Like, what did you really think of Ron then? Like, was there any, like, I need the true, true details, true thoughts on. Well, you know, he was a new boy at church. Okay. Well, was, that's a, <laughs> and he was kind of cute. He was kind of. <laughs> I'm going to need pictures from way back in the... I don't know oh, if I've, I've ever got seen. Him. Okay. I've got We're going to have to get those to share. Actually, everybody. one of my friends just sent me a bunch of pictures this week uh, <laughs> from back when we were in youth yeah. group. <laughs> if if this was only... You know, I could show you some pictures, yeah. but anyway. Well, we can post... We can... We'll find a way to share, Debbie. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that that was our first meeting. And okay. I... And, um, I he was pretty quiet, though. Really? Okay. Uh, he was quiet. Ron, what did you think? What was your... Do you want to tell us the... Yeah, well, my... So my version of this story is a little different in that... So I do remember that uh, my family had been going to uh, another church, and my dad said, hey, we're going to uh, go to the First Baptist Church of Arnold. And so Debbie's family was still pretty new down there. Her dad okay. was the pastor, and... Anyway, we went to this new church, and uh, I remember standing outside the doors of the auditorium, and I saw Debbie walk through the doors. And <laughs> oh, so, like for me, and, this is and, the story yeah, I've always so heard. We, Here we go, people. When we yeah. met, like, and and so again, when I tell people, I was sixteen at the time, and she yep. was thirteen, right? Yes. And so, my boys always, when I tell their story, they're like. Dad, that is so gross. Like, she was only 13 years old. And I'm like, you didn't see your mama when she was 13, right? Like, because I'm telling you, 13 year old oh, Debbie Davidson walked through the doors and I heard the horns and bells and whistles and angels of heaven singing. And I'm like, that's my girl right there. You knew right yeah. then. Now, it took me 11 years to convince her to marry me, but yeah. I knew right then and there. Like, so, you know. What's the Rascal Flat song, God Bless the Broken Road? It was it was kind of a broken road for the next 11 years, but we yeah. managed to finally get it together. But I seriously, it. I I did. Um, I When I saw Debbie when she was 13, I was like, holy cow, look at that girl right there. That's my girl. It. So Well, so now we got to hear the story. So what, I mean, you just said it took 11 years hmm. in there. So like, just give us the little snap, like what was going on? I mean, obviously you weren't going to, I mean, I guess. You weren't going to get married at 16 and 13. You guys didn't even start date. I mean, like, I need some fill in some details here. So when did you start, like, dating or going okay, together? Well, what was the... You know, this this secret is out. It's the long been out. secret is out. But, <laughs> but back in the day... This is going to get so good, people. Back in the day, <laughs> you went on church visitation. Church visitation. Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. Church yes. visitation. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and the youth group went out on visitation, too. Okay. Can you tell people what that means, just for people who don't okay. have any context? It, <laughs> yes, no context, yes. Uh, so Monday night was church visitation okay. night, and anybody that had visited the church on Sunday yeah. 
got a personal visit. Okay. Um, okay. If they filled out a card and put it in, you know, in the plate, yep. they got a personal visit. And if there were teenagers that had visit, visited the church, they got visited. Okay. Okay. So we would always go to church visitation. Uh, very quickly, Ron started going. Into church visitation. I have no idea for why. the youth group. I've been holy for a long time. <laughs> that's that's yes. it. Yes. yes, that's it, Ron. And Ron and I would go out on visitation okay. together to make our visits. <laughs> so good. Well, uh, well, well there's why, more to the story. Not, don't go there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Do. Well, <laughs> you got to go there. <laughs> like, <laughs> is there something else we need to know well, about church visitation? Well, we didn't always make it to the address of uh-oh. the person. Like, sometimes I would go other places. Yes. But Ron, you were right. He Maybe was parking. So, he was trying to corrupt you. <laughs> and and that, that's a term that probably most people don't yeah, use. Would you like to tell us what parking it means, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite um, of church visitation. <laughs> oh, boy. There we go. Someone well, made. she was only 13. Her parents wouldn't let her date, but I was very strategic in that, hey, would you like to be my visitation partner? And I was old enough to drive, and so we would get in the car and take this off, is, and it, this is, see, this is we're off I to a horrible say, start. Ron's aren't we? whole story is the whole reason why I don't like my kids being in youth group because I'm like, I need you to watch out for my girls. Like, hey, a Ron does not come along. Look how it ended. Though. It's been, it, 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 was, uh, it was all part of God's it was all worth it. miraculous plan. That's yeah. good. So you guys weren't. Well, I guess you were technically okay. Well, here's what I need to know. So 11 years, Debbie, did you get, I mean, if you were parking, you were at least in some kind of relationship. <laughs> did you know you were in a relationship with Ron? Or was this? <laughs> so then what happened? You guys graduate high school. Ron, you went on, you didn't stay in St. Louis, did you? Uh, well, I, no, I went to Texas for a couple of years okay. and then I actually went out to California for a few years okay. and you guys weren't dating then, in that whole time, were you? So, so no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah there's some no, good stories during, that are yeah, going to happen in here. Yeah, I feel like during that time we were not dating. Okay. Go, so go ahead. You can tell. <laughs> Debbie, which, you, you can tell I, I the have story. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, we were in a different school district. Okay. The, the, because most people that went to First Baptist Arnold were lived in Arnold or okay. very close. Yeah. At, at that time. Now, I think, you know, the lines are, you know, there's a lot of people that go to First Baptist Arnold. But they all I, went to Fox. I okay. We went to Fox. Okay. Ron went to Lindbergh. So, okay. you know. He could be, he could be kind of, you know, sneaky, and <gasps> it wasn't long. Kind of sneaky. <laughs> it wasn't long before I learned that he had a girlfriend at Ron. school, and and then it wasn't long after that that I learned he had a, a work girlfriend too. So he was kind of a ladies' man. You were kind of a player, is what I'm actually uh, he hearing. Was the player. <laughs> and <laughs> Debbie, how did you feel about? It? So when you found out what happened, how old were you when you found out that this was going on? Um. <clears throat> oh, it. I recently found letters that I wrote back when I was thirteen or fourteen. Oh, I had to, I had to, I had to rip them to shreds. <laughs> oh, <Jenny. laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, somebody said, "Oh, you should have kept those. Those would have been so fun." They to were read. Really? like hate mail to Ron. Yes, yes. like hate I hate you. You broke my yes. heart. Oh. Yes. yes, yes, Debbie. I wish you would not have burned <clears throat> those. Would have been great to, <laughs> to read. Yeah, sure. I'm glad you bring them with you <laughs> on the podcast. But anyway, okay, yeah. so. Ron, do you have anything you would like to say for I yourself? Do, I do have a rebuttal <laughs> if I could make it. Yes. And so um so she always says that, you know, she was my church girlfriend and then I had a um I had uh a school girlfriend and a work girlfriend wow. and um but and there might then be some what truth I, to there, that. There might have been. And then <laughs> then what I say is so um, my wife has a hard time saying no. Like she okay. said, yes, I tell people that's how I got her to marry me. But there, there, I mean, you know, my wife to this very day is quite a looker, right? And so back those, those days, <laughs> like if you could get Debbie though. Davidson to go out with you, that yeah. was, that was a big deal. And so there was no shortage of guys that wanted her time and attention okay. and she okay. couldn't say no. And so we have this little ongoing debate, right? She's like, I wasn't dating other guys. And I'm like, if a guy asks you out, 
comes and picks you up at your house, takes you out for dinner, pays for dinner, takes you to a movie, pays for a movie, brings you back to your house. That's a date. And she's like, no, we were just friends. So we have, our stories are a little bit different. Okay. It gets a little hazy. So what I'm trying to say is that I wasn't the only guy Debbie was hanging out during that time either. And so, um, I see how, so yeah, so the road, the road was a little, it was a broken broken road in there, but okay. So then what finally walk us through, go back. What finally was the, okay. So we, for me, all through high school, I guess we kind of dated. We had a love hate relationship. We did. We did all through high school. But he was, of course, out of high school for most of my high school yeah, years. Yeah. So, but he was still around in the area. I, okay. I think he he went off to Baylor my last year of high school. But I do remember coming. I uh, had a cousin that went to Baylor, so I went to visit, and so all through high school. But then, um, probably when I went away to college. We did not date for the next four years. Oh, wow. Okay, so there was a big break in there. There was for four years, but we were friends, and okay. he was best friends with my brother. So okay. every holiday when we all were we home, were seeing- we were at church together. We He was over at the house. And so we, were, we still had that love-hate relationship, uh-huh. although uh-huh. we did not date at all. I mean, we would talk and... and um, <clears throat> um We'd go on ski trips. Our church went on yeah. a ski trip every year, and so we'd go on the ski trip and ski together. And okay, and so how did I, you... I, I would beat him down the slopes as no. we ski. <laughs> I feel like that's a we would have uh, some competition there uh-huh. on the ski slopes, yeah. didn't we? Yes, we did. I feel and... like that probably <laughs> helped your favor because Ron's kind of competitive, but <laughs> yeah, he likes somebody who can hold their own. So that's yeah, a good. Yeah, we ha- so we spent lots of time together in those four years and. And then I graduated from college. Well, actually, uh, we went on a ski trip in January before I moved back home to start my internship. Okay. Uh, I, I did an internship at uh, Missouri Baptist Hospital. And when we were on that ski trip, he said, you're moving back home. And he said, I think he was out in California at the time. And he said, I think I'll move back home too. Okay. And I'm like, why would you do that? And he said, because I'm going to marry you. And I said, there is not a chance in the world I would ever date or marry you oh, again. I so, so wish anyway. we could go back and like have YouTube, yeah. like <clears throat> that YouTube and vlogging was a thing and we could have just seen this because I would love to have seen what happened. Yeah. But we and were b- friends. It was, way, uh, it was always a fun, <clears throat> playful yeah. back yeah. and forth. Uh, probably we were both flirting, you know, at the time. But And I did, by the way, move back from California. And then right. I asked her out on a date. Yep. And she... Uh, I said no for a few times. Yeah, but okay. she did but go I out did on a date in. with me. We went to the top of the tower restaurant. I don't know if that's still around. It was out in Westport. Okay. And so took her. It was a pretty nice restaurant. And then sat there across from her that night on our first, like, that was a real date. Yep. Not 16 and 13 yes. anymore, but now we're, like, yeah. much farther down the road. And so I did... Um, and and this was very cocky of me to do this, but I did look at her at that date, and I looked at her again and said, I'm going to marry you. And that- she laughed in my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, Debbie, what finally wore you down? How? That's the term. Uh, truthfully, a lot of prayer. Yeah. And a lot of God working in both of our hearts and yeah. and... A lot of change and, you know, a lot of maturity too. I mean, you know, you're a kid and you act one way and as you mature, God changes you and, and, uh, Ron Cathcart became a different man and I'm sure I became a different woman. Yeah. Um, and, um, so... There so you go. it took me eleven years after all of my he, player he, he, years he, and he all no of that. No longer had a then. A, then it took a while for me to pay <laughs> penance for her. Okay, to that's like, good. Hey, maybe that, you are really different. And he, yeah. he no longer had a girlfriend at work and at school yeah. and at church. I, 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 he was devoted at that point. That's and, good. And, and has been. Let's just state for the record. Yes, let's have for been. the record. I, from there, now on, Ron is no longer. We would not has, use the word player for Ron now. <laughs> there has <laughs> never, uh, and and truthfully, there has never been a question. Yeah. Since, uh, since actually, since we started dating. Yeah. As adults. Yeah. 
that he was committed to our relationship yeah. and that there was any. So Debbie, I want to actually talk about this for a minute because you brought up a great subject and a lot of relationships struggle. I mean, that is one of the biggest things. Ron, you get the privilege and honor of getting to hear, and probably both of you together hear a lot of people talk about their marriages, being mm-hmm. a pastor, like you have people come, and I'm sure that you guys know, I mean, a lot of relationship issues come with either somebody, there is some misrelationship steps that happen with somebody else, or they're afraid that that is going to happen. Can you guys just talk a little bit about what do you guys do in your marriage over the last 33 years to kind of help make sure that neither one of you have to question that you're being faithful and true to each other. Do you guys have some things that are kind of put in place or just ways that you know, like, hey, Ron's doing these things and you don't have to question that this or vice versa, Ron? Absolutely. I mean, I think from day one of our marriage, we we talked about that stuff. Yeah. And just that... Um, and I know some people, you know, say, well, that just doesn't work for me. But we we kind of just said we are not going to ever be in situations alone mm-hmm. with the opposite sex. Yeah. Uh, it's not a trust issue of each other. But for one, it's just um, it's for other people looking on, there, mm-hmm. it might raise questions in yeah. people's minds. And then it does open the door for the enemy to... Work yeah. and and so it's good, Ron. What would you add? Yeah, well, that's just something that that <clears throat> we have been very, um, you know, we we talked about it early, and it's something that was very important to us. And we have seen a lot of people, unfortunately, um, make missteps and mm-hmm. get involved with somebody that was not their husband or wife. And mm-hmm. um, I remember one time many years ago at Two Rivers, we had a situation right, and I was talking. There was somebody on our team that had messed up, and I was talking to another pastor, and he said these words. He said, you know, we're only two or three bad decisions from ending up in the same place, and that's the way Satan works, right? Absolutely. And and you know, even with our team, Sarah, right? Like, I'm pretty adamant about that with our team and say, hey, I want you guys to be careful. And like, if we're all going someplace, right? Like, we don't even ride in cars. I'm like, I don't. And and some people would look at that and say, it's crazy. But it's like, no, don't put yourself in the situation of being alone with another man or a woman who is not your husband and wife, um, because it, it, it's just, if you build your walls up high enough and far yep. enough out, then you don't ever have to worry about being there. And Absolutely. again, some people would look at that and say, oh, that's just crazy. But that's just something that we've both been yeah. really um, just have stuck to that since the very beginning. So and, we don't ever put yeah. ourselves in those situations. Yeah. And my dad... Being a pastor, that was one of his yeah. rules, you know. Yep. And so I watched on and saw that in their lives. And I, I can even remember, you know, mom didn't even want like somebody to come over and work at the house oh, if she was right. alone. Well, if it was a man, right. I mean, she, there, they were very cautious and guarded yeah. in that area. Um, and just everybody. Because, Gets to make that choice for themselves. Yes. And that would yes. be a conversation to you guys listening, whether you're mm-hmm. in a dating relationship with somebody or you are married. I mean, part of it is just have the conversation and say, I mean, Will and I have a deal that we know if I am going to be in a situation that's even, I, I text him and just say, hey, just so you know, this is the situation right. I'm in, just so that there's never, and he does the same thing with me with his work. It's yeah. a little different. And so it sometimes is. he yeah. has co, and of course there are situations and we don't want to be, our world is a little different time right now. Yep. And, but he just always texts me like, hey, I've got to work coffee with this person, but just want you to know. It's just a heads up so that there's never any, or if somebody came to me and was like, hey, I saw Will, you know, like, there's just no worry about it. And so that is a great conversation for y'all listening to have with your partner or spouse to just, hey, just bring it out and be open about it, how you guys can love each other in that and make things that work for you in your relationship. Okay. So you got worn down. Ron, I have a really, I'm going to ask you, Ron, about this. Yep. At some point, you had to officially ask Debbie to marry you. Yes. Do you have a story that you would like to tell about this? Yeah, well, I do have a story. So I, I tell people all the time, Debbie's not great at making decisions. She's great at a lot of things, but making decisions is not one of them. I am a decision maker. Like, I, you know, I make yeah. decisions all day, every day, right? Yes. Like, it's what yes, we do. do. And so um, I was ready to get married a long time before she was. <laughs> 
And um, so, and I really did, I, I joke and say, I, I wore her down and she finally said, yes, I'll marry you. Just leave me alone. Right. Yeah. But that it's a joke, but it's not really a joke. Like I, I did keep like, Hey, what, what's up? Cause I'm ready. And yeah. she's like, I'm not ready. And so finally, uh, one day she did. Well, in fact, I went away to a year of seminary because okay. I thought we were going to get married. And then she's like, no, I signed a contract to teach. And I'm like, well, I'm going to seminary. So we actually had a long distance oh, wow. dating relationship. I went out to California for the summer, helped work on a church plan out there. I remember I was sitting in California and I said to her, I, that they had pay phones back in these days, right? <laughs> so we don't have pay phones. And so I pulled into this grocery store parking lot at the end of the summer. I've got my truck. I've got everything I own in the back of the truck. And I pulled up to this pay phone and it was at the height to where I didn't even have to get out of my truck. So I pull up to this pay phone, <laughs> grab the pay phone. I call her on the phone and I'm like, hey, I am sitting in California and I'm at the point to where I t- need to take the highway to go back to Fort Worth mm-hmm. or come to St. Louis. And... um so we talked for a little while, and I said, I'm coming to St. Louis. And, and what this was not an ultimatum, but I just said, yeah. hey, we've been doing this for a long time, and like we need to either decide we're going to do this, or we need to decide we're not going to do this. And again, that wasn't an ultimatum. Yeah. It was just like, we need to move on with our lives, right? right? And wait, so, Debbie, it, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, are you remembering this situation up until this point the same way? Just Yes, that, that that's pretty... Yeah. yeah. So what did you feel what, about the conversation? I, I remember saying, you do what God's telling you to do. Don't come back here because of me. Um, But, but come back I here. I still <laughs> love you, and I think God's got things for us. And so I think that's, that's kind of... Yeah, and 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 we. Had but I done didn't tell the, him what to do. We and, had the year before done the long distance thing with her teaching school, me in seminary, and yeah. we'd see each other, you know. But it was it's it was so hard. And so anyway, I was just like, this is really hard to do this long distance. Yeah. So I did call her, and I just decided I drove my truck back to St. Louis, and I okay. said I'm coming back to St. Louis for this next year, and we're going to be able to date, like mm-hmm. see each other every day, and we're going to decide. Because we really do need to make a decision. And so anyway, that was in August at the end of the summer. And I drove back to St. Louis and I got a job here. And um, sometime in October, towards the middle or end of October, she looked at me one day and said, I'm ready. And I'm like, you're ready for what? And she Ah. said, I'm ready to get married. And I, so, you know, I'm doing the hallelujah dance. (laughs) Um, So the next day, I went to a jeweler and bought a ring. Okay. And uh and I I And then he didn't ask me for Yeah, so I, another, I went, he didn't even mention didn't it again. I'm that. like, "What? You've Shh. been talking about yeah. this for two and a Just half years yeah. like now, man, to do and right, I Debbie." I say, "Okay, I'm ready." <laughs> and then crickets, you know, he doesn't say That's how it's been right. out there. But she word. didn't know that I literally the next day I went out and I bought a ring and I was just waiting to get the ring back. Okay. So okay, and she's like sitting there saying. I, this guy's been begging me to marry him, and now I say I'm ready, and <laughs> now I get crickets. <laughs> and so anyway, it took whatever, a month for me to get the ring back. And then as soon as I got the ring back, I actually I set up a date, and I was going to do the whole nice restaurant yeah. and have them bring the ring out in the dessert and all yeah. those things yep. that you know people do. And so I had it all set up, and the day – so she has no clue. She's actually getting mad at me. And so anyway – I had asked her out on a date, so she calls me up on the day that I'm going to ask her to marry me, doesn't know it. Yeah. And she said, I don't really feel that good. She's like, I don't really, oh, like, no. I don't feel like going to a fancy restaurant. I don't feel good. And I'm like, well, can we just get together and hang out? And she said, yeah, we can hang out. I just don't feel good enough to like go to a restaurant and do all that. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to come get you. And so I came and got her and I just put her in the car and took off. She didn't know where we were going. She's like, where are we going? What are we doing? And I'm just driving. And so as we're driving, she looks at me and she's like, then she starts getting on me a little bit about, hey, like, aren't, you know, I told you I'm ready to get married. And I'm laughing because I'm like, I'm driving towards downtown St. Louis 
to the arch to ask her to marry me. And she's sitting in the passenger seat saying, why aren't you asking me? <laughs> right. And so anyway, I drove downtown. I parked. I went over. I got underneath the or- arch. Aww. And I actually gave a corny speech. I got down on one knee and I'm like, this is my city. This is my town. I was born here. This is the arch. There's the ball stadium. The St. Louis Cardinals play there. Like I gave this really corny speech and I'm down on my knees and she thinks I'm playing around. She's like, get up off your knee. And, and so I took her hand and stuck it in my coat pocket and that's where the ring box was. And she pulled the ring box and then she realized I was being serious and I opened the ring box and asked her to marry me underneath the arch, downtown wow. St. Louis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was sweet. And so that then, sweet. and at that time there was a little McDonald's that was, it was a riverboat, <laughs> river but it was a McDonald's <laughs> oh, yeah. that was on the riverfront. And so I, like there was nobody else there because it was all pretty impromptu because my plan had fallen apart. And so we like walked over and got a cup of coffee at the McDonald's and she's showing the guy behind the counter, look, we just got engaged. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. Uh, well, Ron, that's, there a you good, go. that's a good yeah. story. I'm proud of you that we didn't have to like shame you on the podcast <laughs> that you had a horrible proposal story or something. So thank you for, that's good. Okay. So you guys get married. We're moving right along. So this is the question I want to ask because we got to We've got 33 years to cover here, yeah. and we just got to the marriage part. This wow. is great. Yeah. So you guys that's have probably lot. known, I mean, 44 years, if you said 11 years. Yeah. Guys, that's a long, that's, that's huge. You've way yeah. had more than, like, what, three quarters of your lives to know each other, and that's yeah. kind of something. So, so here, let me do the math for you. I'm not I trying was, to t- ask I, no, how old you are. We, I'm just we saying, don't, I, we're, we're not weird about our age. No. So I was... 16, she was 13. I'm yeah. 60, she's 57. That's that's where we're at right yeah. now. So we've known each other for a long, long time. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Okay. So first year of marriage, I kind of love so like if you can think back to those first early years. Now I feel like you probably had with knowing each other for 11 years, probably worked out a few of the oh, beginning relationship. Maybe piece, but you would just be wrong. I would be <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was trying to give Ron some credit that maybe he <laughs> found some of this stuff. But can you just tell us, like, what was some of the early years oh. like of Ron and Debbie's marriage? Actually, I was talking to a young single girl yesterday, and we were we were talking about this, and, yeah, and this I, not e- in even about this, but just talking about how how hard marriage is. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's work, and... And even if it's wonderful, and I know there's couples out there, God bless them, that just say, oh, we had no problems and we never argue. And I think they're lying, Debbie. I, I don't know that I that's really true. I kind of think they're lying or else they just don't communicate. But anyway, anyway, I what is so funny is I remember I, I was telling her yesterday, I said, what's so funny is I remember one time. Somebody saying, "Well, how was your first year of marriage?" And Ron was like, "Oh my goodness, it was great." We and I was like, "What are you talking? <laughs> are we about? in the same relationship for <laughs> the last year? Whose marriage are you talking about?" Because it was hard. It was yeah. so stinking hard. But I mean, nothing. It just it's just yeah. hard to learn you, to live with somebody yeah. else, and that's true. All their idiot idiosyncrasies, whatever. Just, he was a quiet man, Uh an introverted man that needed his quiet time. I was somebody that just wanted to hang out at night when he got home and chit chat about our whole day and, and (laughs) talk about what we wanted to eat for dinner. And, and you weren't having that, Ron, you didn't want to talk about all those things. Um, no, no, I, I, I didn't really. That's, that's not, that's, that's good. No, it's that, okay. Yeah. No. Uh, okay. So, so I we, think what she's saying is we had a really different picture yes. of what it was going to yeah. look like when we both came home from work at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Yes. So we talked about on our last episode, it, I mean, it's expectations, right? Mm-hmm. Picture expectation. So can you, I'm going to ask you, I mean, what has been, and you can count from either the beginning years or all mm-hmm. of the 33 years, what has been one of the biggest expectation adjustments of what you thought maybe marriage would look like or your marriage would look like, and then you've had to adjust <laughs> your expectation because it was not quite measuring up? Do you want me to go first? Sure, go. We both love people. 
Mm-hmm. I think uh, Ron's become more of a people lover through the years. <laughs> Is, is, would that be that's true? a good way to say it. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a safe absolutely. way to say it. But, uh, but I was always, I, I mean, I wanted to have people over, wanted to go socialize, yeah. Yeah. wanted to uh, be out and about. And he, and, and anybody that goes to Two Rivers knows this, you know, he's, he, he's very happy to go to North Missouri and be all by himself. <laughs> And, and he likes me to be along. He's okay. Well, he's okay with me being along. <laughs> He'll tolerate you being there. What you're saying, as long as I can be quiet and let him have his <laughs> solitude. <laughs> but um, no, he's much more of a loner. And yeah. um, so I guess probably, and I saw that when we dated. Yeah. But you know what? When you're dating, you kind of you kind of enjoy that alone time and right. and you think oh well you know we'll do when we get married right, right. and so you have the expectation yes. you know that you're yep. you're talking about and and so um i've i've learned that that's something that he really needs mm-hmm. and that's okay yeah. and um and he also is great and i mean it's it's God growing us both mm-hmm. every day mm-hmm. to learn to be more selfless and yeah. and yeah. Um, do the things that the other one needs yeah. or wants. Um, That's but anyway, be. Ron, yeah. what was one of your well, biggest? Well, so so let me let me speak into that for a yeah. second. So so we're talking about the early years of marriage here. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say um, uh, a couple of things. First of all. Um, I remember standing on the platform, her dad did our wedding, right? And so they're all the vows that you do, yeah. right? And yeah. I have done myself done a lot of weddings. hundreds of yes, weddings, yeah. right? And so you're standing there and I always, I always laugh because I'm, I'm with this couple and I'm saying, you know, do you do this? Do you do this? And they're like, yes, we do. We do. We do. Right. Yeah. And they, they've got goo goo eyes for each other. And as I'm standing there, I'm in the back of my brain. I'm just like, you have no idea what you're about to get into. <laughs> right. Cause there's no way that you can. No, you can't. There's no, no right. way that you can. And so right. um, I'll be very honest. Right. Like when I was on that stage on February the 6th, 1988, promising whatever I promised to her. Yeah. Um, I was, I didn't know anything about serving my wife. I was there for me. Yeah. Because she was a prize. Yeah. She was drop dead gorgeous. And my motives on that day were purely selfish. I didn't know any. And so then we get married, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, I got my girl. And then we, we get married. We this go good, on Ron. honeymoon. We come back, right? And so found out very quickly this is something that we didn't know. Um, because we we did not live together or anything like yeah. that, right? Yeah. So we move into an apartment together. So we, we do our wedding. We, we go on a cruise. We come back, and now we're in an apartment. Yeah. So first day, we both got to go to work. 5.30 in the morning, she gets out of bed, pops the shutter on our window, and it goes up, and she starts singing, This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Right? I'm serious. And I am not a morning person. I, I At this point in my life, I get up early every morning. I actually go down and get coffee for us and bring it up, but I'm yeah. still not a morning person. Yeah. I'm up early, but I don't have to like it. Uh, like, I like the you don't want to hear day. the singing right? and the birds and the yeah. sun in your eyes. And so, and, early. And, okay. and so right, like, right out of the gate, I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. This is not going to work, right? And so, this is not gonna so, so, you know, that's a deal. And then the second or third night of our married life after our honeymoon, yeah, it's a Tuesday night. I come home from work. I go upstairs. I put on my gym shorts, my sweatpants, my sweatshirt, and I come down the stairs. And she's like, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to... Play basketball this at the gym. This makes me look no, really bad. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't think I'm, it makes you look I, bad. I, said, I, I said, the same thing. I said, I'm going to the gym to play basketball with the guys. Yeah. And like I do every Tuesday night. Right. And she's like, this is this is the first, you know, night of our, you know, of our first week of yeah. our marriage. And she's yeah. like, I thought we would, you know, have supper together and then we yeah. could sit well, on the couch. Okay, and so the, back, that was back in the day where we had Sunday night church, Monday night yeah. visitation, and then you had Wednesday night church. Well, Tuesday was our only night. To- I, 
Yeah. I was, I'm, <laughs> let me say, just so you, I'm in the wrong on this. No. I was wrong. But let me just say, I'm, we're talking about the yeah. expectations yeah. and having your eyes open wide, right? Yeah. And so I come down, and, and this will also show you that you're talking to two very strong-willed people here, right? It's another thing in our marriage. I can attest to that. Yes. I've seen some of it. Yes. And oh, so really, I love it. I literally, I come down and I'm like, she's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to the gym to play basketball. And she's like, this is our first night. I thought you'd want to stay home, you know? And and so ultimately she kind of puts me in this, you mean to tell me that you'd rather go to the gym and be with a bunch of sweaty guys playing basketball than home here with me, which really wasn't fair. But I'm also in my selfish brain thinking yeah. danger, danger, right? Like this yeah. isn't just about me playing basketball tonight. I'm going to lose some territory here. I'll never gain back. <laughs> Which you was couldn't wrong. give in, is what but, you're. But I'm yeah. just, I'm just <laughs> telling you, yes. that's what exactly you right. You said but I, but we're just keeping it real here. No, so like, this is I mean, this is here. our first week of marriage, and yeah. I am like thinking, whoa, 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 right? And so <laughs> I, I, and you know me well enough to know, and I'm not proud of this, and I have matured in 33 years. But in that moment, I'm like, oh no, I'm not no, going to lose didn't. this battle. And so I, I'm like, I'm going to the gym. <laughs> Well, friends, we are going to leave you hanging right there. We covered so much ground in this conversation with Ron and Debbie that we decided to make it a two-parter. Make sure to join us back here next Wednesday for the second part of our conversation and to find out how their first fight ended. We'd love for you to take a moment to go share this episode with a friend. We love seeing you all share these stories and hearing how much your friends are loving them too. We appreciate everyone every time. And if you haven't rated the show yet, it would mean a whole lot to us if you take a moment to do so wherever you podcast. Your reviews help others find these stories. Have an awesome week and go share a little something good with a friend today.